Hi friends, welcome to this class. And in this class, we are going to discuss about physical properties of solvents. We know that I am not going to discuss all the physical properties, but I am going to concentrate only on three physical properties. One is liquid range, and the second one is dielectric constant, and the third one is viscosity, which you have learnt in all your theory classes. See, the liquid range is nothing but the range between melting point and boiling point. Here I have written few solvents, their melting point in degree Celsius and their boiling point in degree Celsius. See, the solvent like H2O, its melting point or the freezing point of water is same, that is 0 degree Celsius and its boiling point is 100 degree Celsius. It has got large difference between melting point and boiling point hence it acts as excellent solvent or i can say it acts as universal solvent and the next comes the ammonia liquid ammonia its melting point is minus 77.7 degree celsius it's minus and also boiling point is also minus minus 33.4 degree celsius and of hf here it is minus 89.3 degree Celsius and boiling point is 19.5 degree Celsius. And here SO2 that is sulfur dioxide, its melting point is minus 75.5 degree Celsius, its boiling point is minus 10 degree Celsius. And last comes acetic acid that is CH3COOH and its melting point is 16.6 degree Celsius and 118.1 degree Celsius. From this table it is clear that the water acts as excellent solvent because of its high range of melting point and boiling point then the next comes acetic acid at ordinary temperature it acts as solvent so we can use acetic acid as also solvent in organic chemistry few reactions take place in presence of acetic acid which you, when you see those reactions you will be going to get them and see these non aqueous solvents ammonia hf and so2 for them it requires negative that is temperature its melting point and the boiling point range is negative so we need to maintain the negative temperature it is about liquid and range and dielectric constant what is dielectric constant in last class i told uh, dielectric constant is nothing but it is the ability of the solvent to separate the solute see from Coulombic law of forces, that is Coulombic law of attraction, we know that F can be given by F is equal to 1 by D into charge of cation divided by charge of anion whole divided by R square. The distance between cation and anion. If this is cation and this is anion, Q, Q plus and Q minus represent its charge and the distance is R that is distance between two positive charges R and we are going to take its square and D is nothing but dielectric constant from this expression here F represents force of attraction between cation and anion it is force of attraction and from this expression it is clear that as D dielectric constant of the solvent increases the force of attraction between cation and anion decreases from this expression it is clear so we know that as dielectric constant of the solvent increases then the solute can be easily broken that is because the force of attraction of cation and anion which are present in solute will be decreased as dielectric constant of the solvent is increased because of which the solute molecule can be easily broken in last class I told if if it if this is the water and I am going to add NaCl salt, it is going to be broken down into Na plus and Cl minus easily because of water has got dielectric constant constant about 80 at 20 degrees Celsius it has got 80 dielectric constant. Because of this high dielectric constraints, it will be more polar. Like this, it is going to break this Na plus and Cl minus, and this Na plus is surrounded by water molecule like this minus 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 minus. minus. 
because what ray is having dipole movement permanent dipole movement it is polar in nature and it is going to surround this n plus like this and this is nothing but hydration because of this there will be release of energy that energy is nothing but hydrogen hydration energy or hydration enthalpy it will be negative because exothermic there will be release of energy so it is exothermic so it is negative and here the water molecule will like this like this it is going to be separating the na plus and cl minus ion of the solute it is about dielectric constant and this is coulombic law of attraction this represent force of attraction between cation and anion and d represent the dielectric constant as dielectric constant increases the force of attraction decreases what about the dielectric constant of hf that is ammonia nh3 hf that we are going to discuss in my next class there also i am going to give give the chart there you are going to discuss clearly about dielectric constant of those solvent and the next comes viscosity viscosity is nothing but it is the measure of fluidity of solvents what it is viscosity it is measure of fluidity fluidity of solvents what is this if consider water and i have got honey honey we know which we eat no eatable that honey i am going to consider here and here i am going to consider water if i put this water on a glass like this here i am going to put one drop of water it is going to run very fastly whereas on the same glass if i put the drop of honey it will move very slowly so from this it is clear that the water has got high viscosity that is its sorry water has got low viscosity it means it has got high fluidity one which gets high fluidity that is low viscosity it will run fast whereas the honey has got high viscosity and low fluidity so it runs very slow and those solvent which has got low viscosity are very they act as good solvent why that is because the reactions like see in the reactions we may get the precipitate the product will be in precipitation we see precipitation or uh, we we need to filter it filter the product filtration or we need to crystallize the product crystallization if viscosity of the solvent is low for example water there precipitation occurs if precipitation occurs it 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 easily gets precipitated moreover we can easily filter it if the viscosity of the solvent is very small that is uh, i mean viscosity of the solvent is very small there the precipitation occurs fastly filtration can be done easily and crystallization also can be done easily if the solvent have high viscosity like honey we can't do these reactions fastly because see filtration if the viscosity of the liquid is very less then the fluidity will be more the solvent will run very fastly and we get the product easily if the viscosity is very high then the solvent will not run fastly so we won't get product easily so for all these reactions like precipitation filtration and crystallization our uh, the liquid should have low viscosity or the high fluidity and this is about physical properties of solvent in next class we shall discuss about ammonia hf their melting point boiling point that is their physical properties till then take care and have a great day bye